Hi, I'm Mark Coker, Director of the LabAIDS Institute, here with Dick Duquin and Kathy Burke, two experienced consultants, to talk about their work with Science Notebooks. Dick and Kathy, thanks for being with us today. Hi, Mark. Good to be here. To begin with, can you talk about why Science Notebook use is so important in the CPUP program? CPUP is an activity-based program. Students are doing things. Uh, you have to have a notebook in order to record that information, in order to keep it organized, in order to keep it structured. Um, we're an evidence-based program that's based upon trying to resolve issues, to look at things that students are interested in. But at the same time, we want to teach students to be able to record information and to be able to use that information. So you have to have a notebook. Can we talk a little bit about some field-based success stories dealing with how teachers have used notebooks successfully in their science teaching? Kathy, can you talk a little bit about the work in Western New York? A lot of our teachers are using CPUP notebooks. And the most recent testimony that um, really put all of the elements together was uh, by a teacher who's relatively new, maybe been teaching five or six years. And it was like a testimony to how great it was for her students and their work. And she's very enthused about it. And it's improved student behavior in the classroom. And it's also improved the level of discourse in the groups. And the students are doing better work. Dick, how about success stories from the Midwest? Well, we're working with a, a group of teachers for the first time this year. And um, I went to work with them about the 10-week mark and asked them how it was going with the notebooks. And they were amazed. Not one student at this point had lost their notebook. And that the students were so proud of the work that they were doing in this notebook. Um, and it's just made a big difference in terms of the learning in the classroom. Kathy, why don't more teachers use science notebooks in their practice? What concerns might they have to prevent them from doing so? The idea of teachers using the notebook as opposed to creating ways for the students to use the notebook. That's the whole point, is that it's supposed to be uh, something that the student values. And I think teachers are afraid in terms of how to get started and how to grade it, how to incorporate it, incorporate it into their grading system. But those are actually obstacles that are easily overcome. But it's nice to know that other teachers have done this, that it works, that you can make it work, that it's not going to create all sorts of undue hardship on you, that you'll still be able to accomplish things within the classroom period. And so I think it's just the, the hesitancy of not having seen it done or not experiencing it even in their own educational background. It's the philosophy. It's the idea of who owns the learning. I think it's what Kathy was talking yeah. about before, that it's a student notebook. It's not the collection of the teacher's worksheets that you know, were given to them. Can you talk about how using science notebooks actually helps the class run smoother? We know that the notebook can be a, a classroom management tool. That's true. A lot of classrooms you go in, there's a lot of downtime. But if you put a, a notebook protocol in place and you coach the kids from day one on how to use that protocol, you really um, make the responsibility for moving along in the class uh, more group oriented. CPUP really allows a teacher to move around and just like play an instrument and move, let groups move at their own pace so one group isn't sitting there waiting for another group. And like there is no such thing as I'm done. You can do this without the notebook, but it's much tougher. Yeah. It's much more difficult to do. But by having the notebook structure, students are writing things down, and writing things down creates meaning. How can using science notebooks in your classroom actually enhance the learning? It's going to enhance the writing recording skills. Um, students are, are doing something. And, and part of what we know is that in order to write something, you have to have something to write about. Um, it, it's not, it, it's creating that experience. So whether it's a role play or a reading or uh, an activity or an investigation, they're now going to record what they're doing and they're going to write it. And we're hoping that that's going to improve their writing skills. Um, we need them to organize data. So the idea of developing their own data tables. So we go from giving them the data table in the beginning and showing them how to do it to allowing them to develop their own data table as they go along. So the, the notebook, 
progresses, it evolves as the year goes on. With special ed kids, I've seen a lot in, in so many classrooms. I've watched the notebook sort of level the playing field for the special ed person because their thoughts are respected and they know that they can go back and revise and they can reflect. Because really special ed is not about um, making the uh, curriculum less rigorous. It's just, it's about giving p uh, different people different ways to get to the same place. And the notebook really is a forum for the special ed students to do that in. And so teachers having the opportunity to observe the notebook um, as opposed to just looking at the final product, the, the project or lab report that's handed in, uh, teachers actually get to observe sort of learning in the making, the actual process that kids go through uh, to produce this knowledge. I want to teach them skills. Um, if they're going to be acting like scientists, we're all scientists in a way. And we all need to learn skills to increase our learning. So these are lifelong skills. And, and you watch anybody in any business anywhere is recording information, you know, in their own notebook, in their own journal, whether it's a diary or whatever it is. And we need to teach them better ways to do that. It's like how many different graphic organizers can we teach? So we teach as many as we can, but the student might only use one or two of them. But we give them the opportunity to see these, so we try them you know, in the notebook. And if it, this is an evolutionary process on a vertical scale in your school, where it goes from six to seven to eight, and you watch the progress of how these notebooks continue to improve as they go through. And, and what we find is that it just enhances learning, that um, performance is higher, that student scores are higher, because of the fact that they own the learning. I've often read that notebooks can help make student thinking visible. How can they do this? We know the need to write things down. You know, if I ask you a question and I don't give you time to think about it and record it, whether it's in a picture or a set of words or a mind map or whatever the case would be, that I don't get as good a thinking. And if you're in a classroom of 30 students and you ask a question, oftentimes you only get an answer from one person. Now the question is, what are the other 29 doing? Mm -hmm. And so I need them to write this down so that we can see what their thinking was, so that they can see whether it was good thinking or thinking that might need to be revised because it was missing something. And again, it's this notebook that provides the tool to do that. So that sort of formative kind of assessment that yeah. you were talking about before gives the teacher an opportunity to walk around and see what they wrote, see what they've got. Journals have a tremendous positive impact on my students' learning. It's a continuous learning document for them. They have a place where they can record all their science findings and questions they have. They can reflect through their process. It's a scientist journal. When we come together as a class, when we're talking about the activity, the students can look back and find the answers and what questions they had. They don't have to go through numerous papers. They don't lose things. It's all in one place for them. When they need to study for a test or for the exams that they have to take, all their information is in one place. They don't lose anything. It's in one binded place for them. For grading, I collect the journals. It's easy for me to find activities since they are all written up in the same sequence. It's a great source for parents to see what their child is learning on a daily basis, as well as when we have parent-teacher conferences. I can point it out in their journals. This is what they're doing good. This is what they need to improve. The journals allow for the parents to also participate in what the students are learning. It helps them, what did you do in school today? It brings a parent-student conversation home with them. I've used many different types of journaling tools, and I have found the Lab 8 Science Notebook to be the best. It lays it all out for the students, and it really helps them to organize their thoughts. These notebooks, in conjunction with the Lab 8's professional development program, have really helped me to be more effective in the classroom. You can find more information about our work with Science Notebooks at our website and view additional resources for getting started using Science Notebooks in your classroom. Kathy and Dick, thanks for joining us today. Oh, you're welcome. Thanks, Mark. It was a lot of fun.